good participation uh, for for now. Um, I will first ask um, our uh, speaker to introduce uh, Mehreen Arshad to introduce herself and um, and then topic and start. Then we'll introduce the panelists later. So Mehreen, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jay. So. Um, uh, I'm uh, Mary Narshad. I'm an um, assistant professor in pediatric infectious diseases at uh, Lurie, Ch Lurie Children's Hospital. Um, I, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, this is in Chicago. Um, we're part of the Northwestern University School of Medicine. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about COVID-19 and some special populations that, um, you know, perhaps don't get as much attention in this current um, pandemic, which obviously is affecting um, adults a whole lot more. Um, and so I wanted to uh, mostly talk about children, but then also talk, uh, I have a few few slides on uh, pregnant women and um, immunocompromised patients, um, you know, just a, a couple of slides about them as well. Um, so this is the, the state of the world right now. We have more than 2 million cases all over the world. This is um, basically just showing the number of cases um, in, in different parts of the world. Um, we have more than 143,000 deaths right now. Um, the U.S. has the most number of cases in the world right now, um, and we are increasing at a you know, exponential rate um, still. Um, so if you look at COVID-19, most of the data, and again, this is data from China, but this has panned out, um, you know, if you look at data coming from Italy, Spain, most of Europe, as well as our, our own data from the U.S., most of the, most of the deaths um, occur in older, uh, in the older population with those that have, that are more than 80 years old having the highest mortality rate. If you look at the um, younger age group, you know, those that are less than 18, um, there are very few, if any, deaths in that age group. There are actually no reported, uh, well, at this time, there were no reported cases in zero to nine years. Now, maybe we have one or two. Um, but, uh, but, but, but there is a you know, stark difference, as you can see, between children and between the elderly population. Um, so if you look at the clinical character, characteristics of this disease in children, um, this is a study that was initially published, uh, one of the first, you know, case series that came out of um, uh, the Wuhan uh, Children's Hospital um, in China. Um, and this showed they basically followed um, 1,300 um, people uh, or 1,300 children of which 171 were positive. So their positivity rate was about 12.3%. Um, about 41% had a febrile illness. And over here, males also um, were more likely to have the disease than females, which is similar to what we have seen in the adult population. Um, in this study, about 15.8% were asymptomatic. Uh, could you just hold on for one second, sorry. Um, Sorry about that. Okay, so, um, and it was interesting to know that 90% had a family cluster. So just looking at this, this table on the uh, right-hand side, um, you know, as I mentioned, males were more likely to be infected than females. 90% um, had a family cluster. This is, this is interesting because, you know, this, this data was collected at, at a time when the um, disease was endemic in, uh, in the Wuhan province. Um, and still, you know, if most of these kids actually had a positive um, family member, and that's how they most likely got it. Um, and uh, cough, not surprisingly, was one of the more common, um, you know, symptom of this infection. But then also, um, a number of kids had um, pharyngeal erythema. Um, some of them had fever. You know, median duration of fever was only about three days in these children. There were also some less common. Um, uh, um, symptoms and symptoms that these children had, such as diarrhea, um, you know, nasal congestion, rhinorrhea, vomiting, um, etc. If you look at the ACE distribution by symptoms, um, you know, so this is basically looking at the age groups and then the kind, the, the symptoms that they had, um, so asymptomatic infection, upper respiratory, and pneumonia. What you'll notice that most of the asymptomatic infections occurred in the older um, age groups. So kids who were, or infants who were less than one year old were much less likely to have any symptoms at all. Um, in this cohort, three patients did require intensive care support. All of them had coexisting conditions, um, including hydronephrosis, leukemia, 
and uh, intussusception. Lymphopenia was present in six patients, so this is considerably lower than um, what we see in adults. And uh, among patients who had symptoms, 32% um, had bilateral ground glass opacity on chest CT, um, which is you know, commonly associated, associated with COVID um, in, in adults. The one death that did happen in, um, in this uh, cohort was in a 10-month-old child who had uh, presented with um, intussusception and multi-organ failure and died about four weeks after um, mission. So this is the um, data. This is our local, this is our U.S. data. This is collected from the CDC. It was just recently published last week. Um, and this looked at um, all the children who have had um, who have tested positive for COVID over, I think it was mid-February to the first week of April. Um, and so overall, if you look at all the numbers, um, all the positive cases in the U.S., 1.7% of them were in children. So that's not, um, uh, that is basically uh, exactly in line with what is what has been seen in other parts of the world. Um, 30% of these children had no symptoms. And so this is, the, and this table um, basically looks at the difference um, in symptoms in, adult, in pediatric versus the adults. Um, so you'll note that the classic triad of um, symptoms uh, of COVID symptoms, which is fever, cough, and shortness of breath, only happen in about 73% of the pediatric population, whereas it's much more common um, in, in adults. Fever also only happened in about half of the patients, much more common in, in adults. You know, cough only happened in, five, in uh, half of the um, infants. So basically, if you look at all of these, you know, common symptoms, and as well as some of the less common symptoms, they tend to occur much um, uh, uh, much less in children, um, going along with the with the our observation that children seem to have much milder disease uh, even when they do get infected compared to the adults. Um, this is looking at the number of cases um, along. Um, versus the age groups and looking at the ICU admission versus those that were hospitalized and those that were not hospitalized. So the black is um, those that were not hospitalized. And you'll, again, you'll notice as I mentioned in the earlier um, Chinese study, that most of the, um, the infants who were less than a year old seem to have more severe disease. Um, and so these are the infants, these, this is the age group that tends to be uh, most, that, that is more likely to be hospitalized and then also require ICU care. Um, the older age groups, uh, most of these, you know, uh, were, first we have more numbers in, this, uh, in these age groups, but also um, these uh, patients do not tend to require hospitalization and the vast majority of them um, are, you know, do pretty well at home um, of, and, you know, uh, fewer numbers of them requiring hosp hospitalization and ICU care. Um, so, like I said, we, um, I work in, a, in at Lurie Children's Hospital. We are a freestanding children's hospital. So, uh, we are, you know, while we're part of the Northwestern University, we um, pretty much are our, our own entity within, um, you know, we have a separate building and, and on all of that stuff. So, over the, la over the last, um, I would say four to five weeks, we have tested 383 um, children, um, of which 34 were positive for COVID. Again, that, that's you know, around 10%, so that's the same um, uh, uh, percentage-wise as what had been seen in the Children's Hospital in China that I mentioned earlier. Um, and I, the other thing I, I would also notice, so you know, it's 10% of all the children um, that were had some of the classic symptoms of um, of COVID, and so you know, right now we are not testing everyone who has um, cough, fever, um, nasal congestion exam. Uh, for example, we are only testing children who uh, who uh, who either have. Um, you know, have a high risk, um, what we consider high risk, so patients who are, you know, either have asthma or, you know, compromised for some reason or, you know, are, um, um, or, or have patients, fam you know, family members that are positive um, and, and, and or, the, or if they have a travel history. So this is, you know, the uh, population that is much more likely to have infection. And even in that population, only 10% of our kids actually tested positive for, for uh, COVID. Of the 34 um, kids who tested positive, 10 required admission, um, and uh, four of them um, required ICU level care. Two of these kids were intubated, one um, has recovered and um, uh, just yesterday got discharged from the hospital. Um, 
interestingly, um, you know, despite the fact that we only had 10, 10 children in the hospital, 44 of our healthcare workers also tested positive um, for COVID-19. Uh, COVID and um, actually, when we went back and looked, you know, our infection control team, when they went back and looked, none of the healthcare workers that were positive for COVID um, had come into contact or had known contact with the COVID, with the, with the COVID positive patient. So, I'll, and I'll touch on this, why this is sort of interesting um, in a bit. Um, this is the graph that basically looks at the viral copies in, um, in, uh, in children. And so this is the, um, you know, the log of basically viral copies. Um, and this is the log viral copies in healthcare workers, in uh, patients that were admitted, um, and then patients that, that went home. Again, these are all children, right? So or these two are children, these are adults. So it, you know, it's really interesting to know that children who um, went home, who came to the ED and then were tested, but then deemed um, stable enough or you know uh, uh, healthy enough to go back home, actually had a higher viral load compared to those children that required uh, admission. And that viral load was similar to what was seen in the adult healthcare workers. None of our healthcare workers have required admission, um, and so um, you know these are again not very sick healthcare workers. Um, but it was just interesting to note that the level of viral um, or the you know the, the burden of viral virus does not necessarily correlate correlate with um, the severity of disease um, in children and then and you know I think there is some data out there um, showing the same for adults as well. All right, so coming to perinatal transmission. Um, there isn't a whole lot out there at all. Um, this is probably one of the largest um, the case series that that was um, that has been published. So this is an analysis that was done in China um, of 38 pregnant women. Um, it did not show none of these women had any um, cases of severe pneumonia or deaths. Uh, 22, but at the time that this case series was published, 22 of the 38 moms had gestational age between 30 and 40 weeks. Um, there were 30 infants that were delivered. Um, none of those infants had any. Um, a positive, uh, you know, none of them are positive for COVID-19. Uh, two separate neonates that, they, that this report um, uh, mentioned um, did test positive. One was diagnosed as 17 days of life um, and had close contact with confirmed cases of SARS-CoV-2, uh, where both the mother and the nanny was positive. Um, and then another uh, infant was positive at 36 hours. Both of these infants um, seem to do well. Um, this is a more recent um, a review of a number of case reports and case series um, that was done. Um, it just actually came out um, last week. And this basically looks at a total. So they basically looked at all the case reports and a number of different case series that are out there. And um, they had a total of 108 patients um, that, they, that they looked at. Um, and so, you know, in terms of the uh, gestational age at which mothers, at which babies were born. Um, most of this is, uh, you know, as you can see, so 259 days is 37 weeks, which is, you know, a normal, like a term pregnancy. So most of these infants were being born at term, at term or, you know, around term, except for this particular case series where their mean was 224 days, which is lower than the 259 days, which is considered term. Um, Interestingly, um, most of these deliveries by were by C-section, um, and then you know eight percent were was were by vaginal delivery. Again, this is most of this data is from China, and so it's a little hard to know whether you know people were just taking precautions or whether it was these these mothers were actually sick. That's why they required um, C-section. So that is a little hard to know. Um, if you look at the signs and symptoms that were being that uh, that these mothers showed, um, you know they're in sort of somewhat in line with, with what is shown in, uh, in adults. And one could almost argue that, you know, that, that uh, um, these symptoms also seem to be milder. So fewer number, you know, cough. most adults will have a cough, most adults will have a fever, um, and only 68% of pregnant women had a fever and 34% had cough. Um, so perhaps there, these, these mothers have um, less symptoms compared to other, other adults. Um, only 59% had lympho uh, lymphocytopenia, which is, you know, one of the very common um, signs associated with COVID-19. Um, 70% had elevation of C-reactive protein, uh, marker of inflammation. And if you look at the outcomes in mothers, 
there was zero percent mortality that has been um, uh, that has been reported in these case studies, case studies and case series, um, and three percent or three moms out of the 108 uh, required ICU admission. Um, there was only one neonatal mortality, um, one intrauterine uh, fetal uh, fetal death, and one case of vertical transmission. This vertical transmission was considered vertical transmission because there the baby had IgM that was positive. Um, but we, as we all know, IgMs are very hard to interpret. So again, we're not 100% sure that this was actually a uh, vertical transmission as well. Um, the, uh, just quickly going over what we are doing at Prentis. Prentis is our uh, maternity uh, um, um, maternal fetal um, hospital um, at our institute. Uh, what we're doing right now is we're basically looking at whether or not um, mothers, whether or not um, patients have a prior uh, COVID-19 positive test. If they had one earlier in their pregnancy and it's been about 40 days, then we basically treat them as normal, um, you know, give them routine care. Um, if it has been less than 40 days, but it has been seven days since the onset of symptoms um, and, you know, greater than seven, at least 72 hours since delivery um, and seven days since the last positive, then we basically follow um, these guidelines which I'll come back to in a little, in a little bit. And uh, if it's been less than 72 hours since they've recovered or, you know, less than seven days till since they've uh, since onset of symptoms then we put them in the high risk category all mothers and um, healthcare workers in our um, LND uh, um, on our LND wards um, wear um, um, masks um, at this time of delivery uh, the OBs are actually wearing N95s right now um, but otherwise do well when the mother is in labor they're just wearing taking doctor precautions um, when mothers are 7 to 14 days since symptoms or since a positive test the baby is allowed to come to, to stay in the mom's room but um, we have the mom wear a mask we do strict um, hand hygiene with the newborn um, the newborn, you know, drop, we, so we basically have mom wearing all sorts of like, you know, gloves and then basically making sure that the baby doesn't come into contact with either maternal secretions or, you know, with her um, hands directly. When the mother has had symptoms for more than, you know, more than 14 days ago, then, um, we admit the we the again the, the baby does come into the mom's room. Um, the patient still wears a mask, and we you know we take general precautions, but they're not as um, uh, heavily enforced, uh, let's say, um, and as as uh, if if the symptoms had just um, happened. And if the symptoms have been there for only 72 hours, or the mom was you know just recently found to be positive, those are the cases where we're separating the baby. So we take the baby to the nursery, and at the time of discharge, the baby is actually sent home with another family member that is uh, found to be COVID-19 negative. Um, quickly, in coronavirus is immunocompromised children. There really isn't a whole lot of data out there. Um, you know, both SARS and MERS, which were other coronaviruses, were not associated with, significantly associated with the immune status of the patients themselves. In the SARS-CoV-2 uh, um, um, outbreak, there is one uh, paper out there from um, an Italian tra pediatric transplant center. These, this transplant center um, has about 300 or so uh, immunocompromised patients that they take care of. Of those 300, only three had um, tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 and none of them really even required inpatient um, care. Um, there is another paper out there looking at adults and cancer. So, um, you know, 1% of all the um, cancer uh, COVID-19 patients that they had were had cancer. Um, in this cohort, lung cancer was the most frequent type. Um, four of the, you know, only 25% of the, of the patients had received chemotherapy recently. And most of the patients actually were either cancer survivors or had some sort of primary resection without having, um, under, without having undergone uh, chemotherapy. However, patients that were in that did have cancer seemed to have um, a higher probability of severe disease. That's the green line up here. But again, the numbers are so low, it's a little hard to interpret this data as well. Um, and then lastly, we do have a solid organ transplant um, registry that is the universe that the University of Washington is keeping right now. This um, registry has um, 120 cases right now. Of that, 67 were kidney transplant, 14 were liver transplant, heart, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, the median age in this, again, these are mostly adults, so this median age is 56 years. Um, they have um, only 15 of this 100 and um, 20 cases are recent transplants. So the rest of the 120 are those that were transplanted um, 
you know, a, a, a while ago. Uh, and so suppose, so these patients would actually have beyond lower immunosuppression compared to the recent transplant. Um, none of the, these cases are thought to be donor-derived infections, although some of them uh, might be nosocomially acquired. 20% um, of these patients are suspected to have um, some concurrent infection, uh, mostly viral infections, or, or sorry, mostly uh, bacterial infections. One patient did have um, pneumocystis as well. Um, this data is very, very um, new. So, um, but having said that, 70% of the patients, 70% um, of these 120 cases um, did need to be admitted into the hospital, of which about half of them required intensive care um, unit support, and 19% of them had to be intubated. But we've only had six pediatric transplant patients across the, the country that were reported to this registry. The 70% of patients admitted, this is a little, again, when you look at the, you know, when you look, the, the authors or the, the, the keepers of the registry sort of make the point that this is a very new registry and right now only the patients that are actually being that are actually in the in the hospital and being followed closely are the ones that are being reported so this percent is probably artificially um, higher than what it um, actually is um, in my last slide I just wanted to have a, a mention a few um, social and ethical concerns that are specific to pediatric to, to these populations that I just talked about in pediatric populations you know like, like I said 90 percent of these kids also have family members that are sick. Um, and often these, these, you know, these are adults, so they're actually sicker than the, than the pediatric patients that we are taking care of. Um, you know, kids need their parents, kids need um, other family members um, around them to make them feel better. And um, so we, uh, but because of the limited caregivers being allowed, that's often not um, um, possible. Um, like I said, we, of the two PICU, uh, of the four PICU kids that we have, Two of them actually had um, a, a mother or, or a father that was actually admitted and intubated in, in the adult ICU across the hospital. So you can imagine these kids are very, you know, they're sick themselves, they're very worried about their parents. Um, and then you, you know, so we, we tried to put at least one of them on a on remdesivir, which is experimental therapy. Um, but we, but the mom who was the caregiver of this child was intubated in the hospital. And so we couldn't find a, you know, um, a, a caregiver, primary caregiver, to sign the consent form for this child, and so we had to go down the route of, you know, getting um, our legal uh, team involved, etc. Um, pregnant women as well. Again, limited support system is allowed in the hospital right now. Moms, if they're recently found to be positive, may not be able to meet newborn, you know, their newborn. Breastfeeding, as you know, you know, setting. Um, I mean, coming into contact, the skin-to-skin, -skin, um, you know, contact with mother, between mothers and infants is so important to set up uh, the whole breastfeeding cycle, which can be disrupted by the uh, management of COVID-19. Um, and then the last one I wanted to make was about healthcare workers. So our hospital is sort of a perfect example of, you know, we, we're a freestanding children's hospital. We don't have a lot of adult patients. And so it is very easy for our healthcare workers to become complacent that, you know, because children are not getting infected, that they are not getting infected, that they are at lower risk of getting infected, but we still have to remember that our adult colleagues can also be vectors of COVID-19. And so we actually have more healthcare workers positive uh, compared to children being positive in our system. So I will stop there. Um, if anybody has any questions? So <clears throat> thank you, Mehreen. Um, this is uh, Shahid Rubik, uh, your host today. So I, let me... Um, uh, thank you for a great uh, presentation. Let me introduce our panel. I um, have a, uh, uh, you know, uh, very esteemed panelist also there from different um, parts of Pakistan as well, so that we can learn from them what is going on in their cities and in their hospitals. So uh, first I'll go to uh, Dr. Muhammad Ali, who is from Hyderabad. Then, uh, uh, Dr. Qureshi, please go ahead and give your question or comment. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. Hello. G, introduce yourself and then question and comment. Uh, yes, Dr. Shahid. G, G, Boli. I'm working at Lakat University Hospital, as I'm sure, as a family physician. G. A uh, very good uh, presentation from Dr. Maheen and very comprehensive, very elaborate regarding the age, regarding the symptoms, 
so it's very nice to be part of your uh, apna ji bataiye kuch hyderabad mein kya aap dekh rahe hain ke zyada ban rahe hain cases ya itne cases to nahi hai lekin suspicions zyada hain khauf aur jo hai wo laparwahi dono rujhanat hain yahan pe एक तरफ खौफ ज्यादा है लोगों में कुछ लोगों में और कुछ लोगों में बहुत लापरवाही है लेकिन फिर भी अंडर कंट्रोल्ड है इतने केसेस नहीं है हमारे पास अच्छा जी I'm uh, Dr. Shamsa Humayun. I'm I'm working as a professor and head of gynae department at Fatma Naha Medical University. So thanks for this very elaborate and fantastic presentation. Uh, there's one comment uh, about the because uh, Ganga Ram where I work is uh, now dedicated as a, a, a hospital for the pregnant patient who was suspected of COVID-19 positive. so we are getting uh, patients now just today we did a c section and uh, and in hysterectomy so um, as marine uh, uh, was sharing her experience aur unhone bataya ki hum hum kis tarah se newborns ko kar rahe so what we are doing we are doing a little different hamari apni humne apni as i am vice president or president of society of obstetrician and gynecologist of pakistan as well to humne apni guidelines banayi thi main marin se thoda sa puchna chahungi according to our circumstances hum bacche ko the the moment baby is delivered what we advised ke ji aap agar covid positive mother hai to aap bacche ko room mein na kare बिकॉज वर्टिकल ट्रांसमिशन नहीं है लेकिन हॉरिजोंटल ट्रांसमिशन के रेट तो बहुत हाई है स्पेशली इन आर सेटअप पेशेंट्स आर नॉट स्ट्रिक्टली कि वो मास्क पहने या मदर इज टचिंग द बेबी तो आप किसके बारे में क्या राय है and yeah i think that's that's a, that's a good question and i and you know i mean i hamara uh, bhi jo hai we i feel like every week we change our uh, our uh, recommendations uh, but i i totally agree with you i think uh, you know if mothers are not uh, i think the reason that it works probably in our setting is because mothers are much more aware and maybe educated um in terms of you know wearing masks and wearing but you know they they at times they've actually asked us to take the baby away because they're so worried about you know passing it on to the baby so uh but if that is not uh, you know i can totally imagine uh that not being the case in in um uh in in pakistan and so i think uh, anything that you can do to uh prevent the baby from getting infected would be great because like i also showed you you know most of these uh um severe illnesses actually happen in less than one you know less than one uh, one year ka jo age group hai so i i think uh, i think in pakistani setting i think what you're doing actually makes sense okay thank you um let me uh, go to kaleem ahmed please introduce uh, yourself and comment and question assalamu alaikum uh, kaleem ahmed uh, pulmonary critical care and sleep medicine uh main mehreen se puchna chahunga ke uh, there was some studies uh, on a small number of patient uh from china ke breast milk mein they have not found any coronavirus is there any new data there and number two is um if they are taking a full precaution especially in pakistan setting to breast milk ko pump karke baby ko pilaya ja sakta hai ke nahi haan ji i so you're absolutely right the the initial the um, i forgot to mention that case series that i said uh, that i showed uh, earlier the 38 uh, infants ke upar jo thi um 38 pregnant mothers ke upar usme they did test breast milk as well um and placental samples none of which were positive for uh for the virus and um i and again we there is no there is no further data on that um i know that people have looked um and have not found uh found uh, uh breast milk but again numbers are very very small um in our um in our uh, hospital we are encouraging mothers even when they separate when we separate the babies we are encouraging them to pump and uh give the give the breast milk to the um to the um uh, uh to the baby because also remember with the breast milk you're also 
you know, transferring a lot of anti, um, antibodies, which are extremely helpful for babies from, uh, for other viruses and other pathogens. So I think um, to answer your question, I think uh, pumping and giving the breast milk um, is absolutely fine. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll next go to Shoeb, Dr. Shoeb from Nishtar uh, Medical University. Uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself and then question and comment. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, uh, sir, I'm working as consultant neurologist in Nishtar Medical University, Multan. Uh, good morning, and uh, this is a very nice talk by Dr. Mehreen. Uh, sir, may uh, I would like to ask uh, from the madam that uh, uh, we have come across some uh, some papers about the role of BCG, uh, uh, that the BCG is either protective and does uh, what are your uh, suggestion and opinion about it? And uh, secondly, sir, uh, here in Nishtar, uh, we have uh, come across many doctors who are uh, uh, have been positive uh, uh, with the COVID, and uh, the situation is very alarming because more than 60 doctors have come across to be positive, COVID positive. And the health uh, the health workers they are very much reluctant uh, and very much uh, in a in a stage of fear that the disease is this uh, may not disseminate in the uh, in this uh, 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 hospital settings. Uh, just just that was my comment and uh, the question already I asked. Haji, that's a, uh, thank you for, for asking that. I think a BCG question, you know, you know, is it's gotten a lot of press. So basically what, you know, the reason it got press was because this one study was published that showed that countries that had BCG, uh, that, that do BCG vac vaccination also um, seem to have lower number of cases. I think my major concern with that study is, okay, if you look at the, if you look at the, the um, countries that they have um, you know, listed uh, in that paper. These are also the countries that are that that tend to be resource limited, right? So, I mean, Pakistan is a great example, and there are lots of other countries like that. Okay, testing so how do you know? Okay, you know, uh, okay, cases, okay, actual cases, right? So, um, so, so, a lot of these, a lot of these countries um, that give BCG are also uh, low resource. Secondly, yeah, okay. You know, countries like China and and Iran also give BCG. So yet they had thousands and thousands of cases. Um, so you know that again doesn't doesn't make sense. Spain, parts of Spain, uh, Spain is another hotspot of COVID-19 right now, um, and it also uh, uh, you know until very very recently um, was still giving BCG vaccine. Um, about the, the other thing is so BCG. One of the reasons that they think the BCG might have a role is because in children they've shown K. Uh, and again, this was a Spanish study um, uh, that was published a couple of years ago that children who got uh, BCG also were protected against other um, childhood viral illnesses. Okay? So less than five years old kids who got BCG had seemed to have less uh, you know, respiratory viral, viral illnesses. Now, there is no data at all that shows that BCG effect to hair loss into adulthood, especially into the older uh, population where most of the uh, disease from COVID uh, seems to be occurring. Children are protected from, seem to be protected from COVID anyway. So the effect of BCG, I think, um, is really negligible. And I think that, um, I, I, I honestly, and I know that there are some studies that are sort of trying to look at BCG, but I don't think that that's going to pan out at all. And I think Apka, your question, you know, the comment about healthcare workers is very, very important. And that's why I um, mentioned the fact that even in our children's to, you know, pediatric hospital, we've had a number of healthcare workers that are positive. And I think it's, you know, it's, um, it's very, uh, so all of these positive, by the way, were before we did universal mas masking. Since we've done universal masking, where every single person in the hospital, no matter what, what they're doing there, wears a mask, um, these numbers have really, really gone down. Um, but I think it's just very, very important for us to remember that the hospital is like an incubator for the virus. And so, you know, no matter where you step, no matter what you touch, it's there's going to be virus there. And we just have to be very, very, very careful with PPE and with, you know, making sure that we're doing hand washing and social distancing among colleagues as well, not just with patients. Right. Thank you. So, Dr. Shweb, I have a question how many percent of you think that the health workers are talking about the health workers who are wearing masks and face masks? Everybody or 50 percent? Dr. Shweb? Yes, yes.
चले मेरा ख्याल है वो बिजी हो गए तो मैं आगे चलता हूँ आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस डॉक्टर मोतन प्लीज गो हेड एंड इंट्रोड्यूस योर सेल्फ क्वेश्चन एंड कमेंट Assalamualaikum ji this is Maryam Morton I am a staff cardiologist in Loma Linda at the VA hospital and I'm a professor of medicine both at UCR and at Loma Linda University I have a question about for Pakistan maine suna hai ki kuch hospitals in Pakistan they want a, a covid negative certificate from the patients before they can admit them for any non covid reason how well it is that question and और किस तरह से ये स्क्रीनिंग कर रहे हैं हाउ आर दे गेटिंग द नो कोविड नेगेटिव सर्टिफिकेट कहां पर ये टेस्टिंग होती है सो हु कैन आंसर दैट अम अम लेट मी सी प्रोफेसर शमसा अम हुमायूं इफ यू हैव एनी अ यू नो अ फीडबैक ऑन दैट और जी प्रोफेसर शमसा प्लीज अनम्यूट योरसेल्फ एंड आंसर दैट यस आई हैव डन जी जी कैन यू जी मेरी आवाज आ रही है जी जी बिल्कुल आ रही है आप बताइए अच्छा ये मैंने अभी इसमें भी क्वेश्चंस में भी पढ़ा है कि इन्होंने मेरा ख्याल है इसमें लिखा था आई आई एम नॉट श्योर अबाउट लाहौर क्योंकि जितने ये सारी चीजें जितने भी हमारे गवर्नमेंट सेक्टर के हॉस्पिटल हैं इन पंजाब वहां तो आई कैन टेल यू कि ऐसी कोई नहीं कि आप पहले सर्टिफिकेट लाएं तो फिर यू विल बी एडमिटेड बिकॉज जो इमरजेंसी काम तो सारा हर अस्पताल में हो रहा है बट द इलेक्टिव लिस्ट दे आर we are not doing any elective surgeries aur uh, certificate lane ka matlab ye hai ki yahan pe test jo hai bahut agar aap jaldi lenge test to in some labs you can get it in 48 hours kuch 7 days mein de rahe hain kuch 5 din mein so it varies so it's not in my knowledge or in at, at least i can uh, tell about my own hospital वहाँ तो ऐसी कोई रिस्ट्रिक्शन नहीं है कि आप पहले सर्टिफिकेट लाए तो फिर आपकी पेंडिसेक्टमी होगी या आपकी कोलिसिस्टेक्टमी होगी तो और जिस प्राइवेट हॉस्पिटल में मैं प्रैक्टिस करती हूँ वहां भी ऐसा कुछ नहीं है और मोस्टली जो पेशेंट्स मोस्टली जो है वो सिम्टम्स पे और हिस्ट्री आप हम उसके ऊपर रिलाई कर रहे हैं कि अगर किसी के घर में कोई बाहर से आया है नंबर वन नंबर टू कोई उम्र करके आया है कोई तबलीगी जमात में है या एनी ऑफ द पेशेंट और द रिलेटिव नियर रिलेटिव घर में किसी को सिम्टम्स हैं देन इट्स अ डिफरेंट स्टोरी then we ask ki aap aap bhi apna test karaye lekin most of the time uh, it is not practiced in uh, it is not being practiced here in lahore at least ho sakta hai kuch private hospitals ye demand karte ho jaise aga khan ya koi is tarah ke lekin general aisa maine suna nahi because ye mehrin malik intensivist from aku she is also writing yes we are screening everyone now at least for surgery जी वो देखें आगा खान के पास रिसोर्स भी हैं और आगा खान का लिमिटेड उस तरह से वर्कलोड है हमारे हॉस्पिटल जो सरकारी हैं आपको पता हो तो दे हैव ह्यूज वर्कलोड और नंबर ऑफ पेशेंट्स कई ज्यादा हैं और द टेस्ट किट्स आर सो लिमिटेड कि अगर आप ये कहना शुरू कर दें कि हर बंदा पहले सर्टिफिकेट लेके आए तो जो सस्पेक्टेड है आप तो नहीं कि अभी नहीं हम कर सकते आज मैं देख रही थी टीवी के ऊपर वी हैव डन फाइव टेस्ट इन ट्वेंटी आवर्स तो अगर आप इलेक्ट्रो सर्जरीज के और सबसे सर्टिफिकेट मांगने लग जाएंगे तो बताएं फिर वो पेशेंट्स तो दैट वुड नॉट बी 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 विल डूइंग दिस फेवर टू दोज हु रियली डिजर्व दैट टेस्ट अच्छा थैंक यू लेट मी गो टू डॉक्टर कबानी प्लीज अनम्यूट योरसेल्फ एंड इंट्रोड्यूस फ्रॉम पैनलिस्ट Yes uh, uh, hi Dr Shahid I was having trouble connecting today it kept oh, disconnecting so I have not heard most of the uh, the presentation but uh, uh, this is Dr Kabani from uh, uh, Houston I'm just letting you know in case I get disconnected again there was some problem today Ji bataiye koi question or comment aap ke ji we mai bata rahi thi ki i didn't really get to hear the whole thing i'm Aha, not sure uh, achha, if achha. if uh, uh, because I, i've spoken to dr uh, dr uh, uh, shamsa humayo uh, uh, on my own and i was just wondering whether the ppe for the her concern about the ppe question was addressed in this uh, particular uh, 
uh, presentation since I missed most of it. Uh, because I think uh, she had some, uh, you know, we were discussing that there is a... Uh, gee, Dr. Shamsa, was, was that it addressed, your okay. question? Uh, 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 that, uh, G. Dr. Uh, uh, Kabani, thank you so much. BP uh, 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 discussed that the PP is not a level of use. But I have in my hospital mein, as we are now. I have been dedicated COVID positive patients ke for the pregnancy declared in my hospital. So, as Marine said, how many healthcare workers in ke, uh, they got positive. Mm-hmm. So masking 100% we are uh, um, advising and ensuring rather or jo hamari apni obstetrical team hai. Uh, so uh, what we made a policy for them, every uh, girl, it's a female hospital. Let me tell you for the uh, obstetrics and gynecology. Yes, yeah, sure. I, yes, so, I know it. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have told my girls that every patient is COVID positive until unless proved otherwise. Hmm. So you should be dealing every patient like you are touching a COVID. So PP we are giving them and we have started a lot of manufacturing in our local. That is uh, great oh, to know. And we are getting PP freely. Our vendors are here. Our vendors are here. Our vendors are here. Our vendors are here. And now rather in our policy meeting we were discussing that we are going to standardized karne dekhne ke kaun si standard pe pe aa rahe hain like gsm 80 se hum soch rahe hain upar wali ko standardized kar le aur fir unko de den task ke aap provide kare secondly if you are philanthropist jo hain wo free of cost healthcare workers ko de rahe hain jab se nishtar ka aaya aur pic mein log positive hue hain doctors aur nurses uske baad ye bahut acha yahan pe bhi aa gaya ke face shields bhi mil rahi hain except we are short of uh, n95 to kn95 jo hai wo hum apne doctors ko de rahe hain dusri cheez jo hamare yahan pe thoda sa hum jo face kar rahe hain problem wo ye hai that is the testing kits to hamare jitne health kit workers hain jaise meri ladkiyan four front pe hain like they are directly dealing maine aapko bataya ki hum cesarean bhi kiye we did a dnc hysterectomy so they are exposed to lekin humne abhi tak ye ye because of this testing kit sabhi ye policy nahi bani ki sare health care workers jo wahan pe kaam karenge they are going to get their be tested to ab hum unhe yahi kar rahe hain ki aap ek hafta kaam kare do hafte quarantine mein jaye uh, and if you have symptoms, yes. Then you will do it. If you have a positive, you will have a team that is due to symptoms. So then the rest of the team will be tested. So otherwise, now PP is, uh, uh, is available. And our team, like 25 people had an emergency, so our 25 people had 30 people on duty. Thi. So we have all the PPs and these were sufficient in number. We keep a log that how many used and how many have been used and how many have been used. So that, that it should not be misused. Misused, right. right. Thank you um, so much. Let me uh, move on to uh, Dr. Rabnawaz Khan. Uh, you are unmuted. Please introduce yourself. You are talking from deep, so we want to know what the situation is there. Assalamualaikum. I am Dr. Rabnawaz from Deer. Uh, uh, here we are living in a periphery, uh, in a rural area, and most of the cases here are reported. These are in the Tabli uh, Hazrat. Uh, we have in our uh, uh, hospital about uh, 23 patients admitted r- right now, and they have mild symptom, uh, cough, few or mild, not uh, even not require anyone uh, not require oxygen, and. Uh, so eight of them are recovered. Uh, they, we have discharged yesterday. Uh, still, uh, here is a problem that uh, we should uh, do the maximum number of screening so that uh, the actual number is uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, sh- uh, b- because uh, here we have shortage of staff also in uh, uh, a wide uh, we have leg a wide screening program uh, so uh, here uh, the situation is not too bad 
but uh, not uh, not uh, very good also ji ji so um now i would like to um so uh, after the introduction of panelist and their um, round to go to attendees nigat ahmed please uh, ask your question you are unmuted um uh, can you hear me assalam alaikum ji go ahead ji uh, thank you so much i love this because uh, this is an ideal combination of uh, uh, pakistani and us uh, physicians uh, across the board um my, i still have to ask ki why are patients who have mild symptoms uh, are admitted at home do you think that we have our population to blast kar rahi hai we can have volunteers uh, for example sawat mein uh, ek hospital mein mild symptoms ke sath agar log pade hain unko aap educate kar le unko aap uh, you know samjhaye unki zuban mein and then have somebody you know monitor them one of the volunteers in their around their home or city or whatever to ye hamare ward jo hain wo bhar rahe hain with patients with mild symptoms healthcare workers bhi exposed hote hain so mera to hamesha se yahi question rahega ki unko ghar mein kaise kare ye waise wo sorry main bhi ek clip dekh raha tha kisi whatsapp group mein sindh interior sindh se kuch tha ke wo usne banayi video on the phone of all the patients they are eating drinking uh, you know water and having you know wa- doing things on their phone and they were happy and none of them looked uh, sick and they they actually said themselves that we we do not have any symptoms so whether it is because pakistan does not have serious or severe cases at this point and and because they think that at home uh, they cannot be quarantined i, I don't know uh, anyone else on that panelist because because abhi to hamari peak mera khala abhi to abhi to peak aayi bhi nahi hai aur jaise uh, we have like kafi cheeze open up ho rahi hain but we have pa- uh, patients on ventilators in our hospital as well so my question is that we should have the hospitals uh, for people who are really uh, you know sick Uh, and not burden our healthcare uh, you know workers and hospitals with patients who are testing positive with mild symptoms or moderate symptoms who are not hypoxic so aap dekhiye main hamesha believe karti hu ki prevention aur education hamari public ko itni bhi wo wo nahi hai ki agar unko aap educate kare aur unko bithaye unki counseling kare aur phir us we have a baldiyati nizam i think and have jahan wo ja rahe hain us ilake ke bande ko उसका इंचार्ज बनाए अभी तो हमारी इतनी पॉपुलेशन है कि अगर हमारे केसेस बढ़े तो वील ट्रेमेंडस ह्यूज यू नो हेल्थ इश्यूज जी जी सो हुज दिस सॉरी गो अहेड जस्ट अ कमेंट कौन है जी कौन बोल रहे अच्छा मैं डॉक्टर नवाज बोल रहा हूं इधर मोस्टली फिर पेशेंट इस तरह भी है कि बिल्कुल जिसमें सिम्टम नहीं है लेकिन स्क्रीनिंग में क्वारंटाइन से हमने वो किया है आइसोलेट किया है क्वारंटाइन से और पॉजिटिव है uh we have uh, um, uh, some discussion on that with the uh, local government that they should be uh, managed in home and they are asymptomatic but the uh, local government district government are not agree that they should be managed in, at home because they are just they are positive although they are completely asymptomatic but uh, we have to admit these asymptomatic patient if uh, if they are positive one i think the the maybe there should be a graded system uh, the quarantine uh, are not actually the hospital system and and maybe expo or something professor shamsa you raised your hand please go ahead ji doctor shahid a bahut achhi suggestion of nigga de rahi thi lekin humne jo ye dekha ke even jin logon ko humne asymptomatic ko hospital mein bhi quarantine kiya basically quarantine bhi kar rahe na mostly अगर एंड व्हाट आई वेरी स्ट्रांगली फील के प्रोबेबली दिस इज द रीजन कि उतना स्प्रेड नहीं है हमारे लोग बहुत कैजुअल हर चीज को लेते हैं अनटिल अंडर्स दे आर रियली सिक एंड दे आर बाउंड टू बेड तो आपको अपने यहां के ग्राउंड रियलिटीज आर वेरी वेरी डिफरेंट अगर एक बंदा भी मार होगा उसको पूरे रिश्तेदार वहां मिलने आएंगे और कहेंगे इसको तो कुछ भी नहीं है सो दे वुड बी द दे विल कांटेक्ट 
تو اس لیے گورنمنٹ نے یہ پالیسی بنائی آفٹر ڈیلیبریشن کے ان کو ایٹ لیسٹ یعنی ہسپتال میں ایک وارڈ میں اگر آٹھ آٹھ بھی بندے ڈال دیں گے دے آل آر آف دا سیم ڈیزیز وہ ہنس رہے ہیں کھا رہے ہیں پینے سو دس مینس دے آر گڈ اینڈ دے ول بی ڈسچارج لیکن جب آپ ان کو گھر میں کہیں گے کہ آپ کریں ان کو سمجھانا اتنا مشکل ہے ہمارے پاس ایک پڑھی لکھی لکھا پیشنٹ آیا ہے وارڈ کے اندر and that uh, uh, girl she was uh, uh, walking in the corridors khinch khinch ke hamare healthcare workers ke haath pakad rahi hai kar rahi hai usko samjha rahe hain yaar tum covid positive ho so uh, ye counseling aap kar sakte hain logon ko samjha sakte hain but it takes such a long time اتنی دیر میں انہوں نے پتا نہیں دس لوگ اور کو انفیکٹ کر دینا سو پروبیبلی گورنمنٹ نے اس وجہ سے یہ کہا کہ جو بھی پازیٹو آ جائے اس کو آپ کم جب تک ایک یا دو اس کے ٹیسٹ نیگیٹو نہ آ جائیں ہمارے پاس ایک ابھی پڑی ہوئی ہے پیشنٹ شی واز پازیٹو انیشلی شی واز اے سمٹومیٹک وتھ ویری مائلڈ سمٹمس اور یسٹرڈے ہر افٹر سیون ڈیز ٹیسٹ اس کا نیگیٹو آیا یہ برڈن تو ضرور ہے گورنمنٹ کے اوپر لیکن میرا خیال ہے اسپریڈ کو روکنے کے لیے پروبیبلی دے ہیو ٹیکن دس اینڈ لائک یو کین you can have those quarantines are not like a cute hospital setting there are not no. uh, as many doctors or nurses so there's um, no no shahid no. shahid this kaleem ha kaleem bataiye to uh, i think abhi jo baat ho rahi hai wo i think it has a lot of value uh, masla ye hai ke kal parso bhi hum log baat kar rahe the ke aap there are doctors there they are asking patient suspicious about covid but they are not going to test کوئی پتہ نہیں کوئی اسٹگما ہے اس کے ساتھ اور گورنمنٹ کی پالیسی یہ ہے کہ اگر آپ پازیٹو ہیں تو یا تو آپ آپ کے گھر کے اندر آپ کو کسی طرح سے جو ہے محفوظ رکھا جائے کراچی کے اندر آئی نو کہ انہوں نے اپنا جو ایکسپو سینٹر ہے اس کے اندر دے ہیو کریٹیڈ اے ہیوج ایریا فار دیز کائنڈ آف پیشن کہ جو کہ سمٹمیٹک نہیں ہے پازیٹو ہے خالی وہاں پر زیادہ سہولت نہیں ہے ایز فار ایز مائی انفارمیشن از کنسرن سیکنڈ ہینڈ انفارمیشن یقیناً تو لیکن دے ہیو کریٹیڈ دوز کائنڈ آف ایریاز اوے فرام دا ہاسپٹل فار بیسکلی کوارنٹائن لیکن ہماری پبلک کو سمجھانا ایچویشی لانے کے برابر ہے رائٹ اوکے سو آئی ہیو ون کوشچن اوکے وٹ ہیپن ٹو واز اٹ آنسر Dr. Farah Nawaz was asking, so Mehreen Arshad, you already answered that um, question about um, the admission criteria for pediatrics. Yes, sorry, I, I, I thought I might as well right. answer it. Right. So I'll just mention, it's, it's exactly the same. The question was, uh, what is the admission criteria for pediatric uh, for children into the ICU? It's exactly the same as adults. Um, basically, we're, we're looking at Uh, you know, worsening respiratory, uh, re- respiratory uh, status, uh, worsening oxygen requirement, increasing work of breathing. Um, lab values as such, we don't depend on it, but, um, you know, basically just looking at the patient. And when we think that the patient requires anything more than um, just a regular, you know, um, um, oxygen um, uh, uh, th- that they can get on the floor, um, we, uh, uh, you know, s- um, send them over to the ICU. Okay, great. So, um... Do we have um, um, other questions for um, Dr. Mehreen about uh, pediatrics and uh, things from our panelists? Uh, uh, please um, go ahead. Not, not really a question, but just a thought that has come to me because I um, have uh, been looking at some literature on non-invasive ventilation as well as a high flow nasal cannula, negative pressure room, and what people are doing because they're trying to get away from proning. And one of the things that was, I think it is being tried in Europe, is uh, putting a helmet on the patient uh, and using the non-invasive ventilation. But along the same lines, th- there is also a box that you can put over the patient's face. And in pertaining to patients in, in labor and delivery, you know, it's, I, I can't imagine during labor that they could put up with having a mask on their face, you know. So I'm just wondering if there are, uh, has anybody seen any devices that could be used or maybe similar to the ones that we use for non-invasive ventilation uh, uh, on the, in labor and delivery to minimize the, the droplet spread? Jim Mehreen um, or anybody 
Uh, Sanji, that's a, that's a good question. I have not, I, I, I know what you're talking about, but I have not seen, but I also wonder, you know, um, uh, I had mentioned K uh, 90 plus percent, 92 percent of uh, women uh, in published, you know, all the, the data that's published out there, 92 percent of women who were COVID positive uh, ended up having a C-section. And I wonder if it's partly because of, you know, um, the healthcare mm -hmm. workers being a little nervous about uh, yes. Patients taking taking off their masks when they're in labor or you know pushing and and stuff. So I um, I, I I do wonder, but you're right. It, I can't imagine it being easy for a, a yeah, mom of you know a mother just, in labor. Yeah, when I was looking at the at the, one of the presentations today, I was attending. I I thought this could be useful even in labor and delivery room. You know, but so go ahead. So um, I, I'm reading one question from the our webinar where people post the questions. Is there a evidence that um, uh, plant can transmit uh, the COVID virus? Uh, plant says in like body. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Um. um I, not that I've come across, but I'm not, I, I can't imagine why we, you wouldn't think a plant is also a fomite, you know, uh, any surface can potentially uh, transmit uh, viruses. So um, I think I would be as careful with plants as I would with, you know, any other surface. Okay. Um. Uh, well, Shahid, uh, uh, this is Kaleem. Uh, I think uh, she's absolutely right. Uh, fomite could be anything. The, the last I read, uh, the, the New England Journal uh, has an um, article about uh, different type of surfaces where the viruses was found. Uh, uh, the highest duration was with the plastic and the steel surfaces, and the lowest uh, was of the cardboard. I have not seen anything mentioned in that report uh, uh, regarding any, any plants or leaves or anything else. But again, there's a possibility whether how long that would survive there. Um, I, I cannot, I, I could not say anything. So there is another question uh, from Dr. Amir from Shifa Hospital, uh, Islamabad. Uh, what is the general <laughs> policy here in our uh, uh, a country USA that um, all the people who are going for surgery, do they routinely get tested for COVID? Well, all the surgeries, uh, if it is uh, not considered as a emergency or urgent surgery, uh, we are not doing it. So not outpatient surgeries are almost, uh, nobody's doing it uh, except for emergency in uh, urgent surgery and in the hospital setting, um, we are taking all the precaution considering that the person who is going to the surgery uh, is probably is COVID positive. So, so any, yeah, I, any place um, that is going, uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, um, uh, uh, in my experience, it really depends on the institution as well. Um, like our institution, we have a like test developed here so we have an in-house test which turns around pretty quickly um, and so we've been uh, uh, we haven't started right now as of this as of today we are still not doing any elective surgeries um, at all but again given that we're a children's hospital and we're not seeing that many um, that many cases our plan going forward is to basically test every single patient that comes in for any sort of surgery or intervention that requires intubation um, and uh, test them first for COVID-19 um, with the, the rapid turnaround test and then, um, uh, and then go from there. But again, at the moment, we're not, uh, we're not doing surgeries, uh, any elective surgeries either. Yeah, along, along those lines, uh, one thing that, that has occurred to me is that apart from the patients, I mean, uh, the, uh, the practice at the hospital that I'm most familiar with in Houston and uh, at Methodist is that they are, try, they are testing healthcare workers, but it's not mandatory is what I've uh, found out. What my concern is also that not only the patients coming in, once we go full schedule on the surgery, they are not doing any elective surgeries either. But once we do go in, I would be also concerned about the anesthesiologists that have now become 
a team that intubates COVID patients because they are the most experienced. So in my opinion, once we go full-fledged, I think not only the patients, but also all the healthcare workers, and especially the anesthesiologists should be, should be tested. Okay, so um, I will go to, in panelists, I'll go first to Shoaib from Nishtar and then Shamsa and Mariam uh, in that order. So go ahead, uh, Sh uh, Dr. Shoaib from uh, Nishtar. Sir, can you hear me? Gigi, go ahead. Sir, actually, uh, I Madam Shamsa Hamayun se ek guideline or unse suggestion lunga. Uh, actually, in Nishtar mein hume na sir se jo bada problem ye pe face ho raha hai ki jo healthcare providers hain, inko PPE nahi mil raha. So, being senior, I Madam se ye puchunga ki iske liye ki iske liye kya koi uh, what is the ki government ka koi kya koi focal person hai. या कोई ऐसा पर जिससे हम कांटेक्ट कर सकें कि हमारे हेल्थ केयर प्रोवाइडर्स को पीपीई दिया जाए मोस्टली जो निश्चर में इस वक्त आपने लाप लोगों को पता ही होगा कि 63 डॉक्टर्स और इसके अलावा 20 स्टाफ्स और जो और स्पोर्ट्स स्टाफ है जो कि पॉजिटिव आया था इंस्पाइट इसके बाद भी मुझे मेरे जो साथ मेरे कुलीग्स हैं या मेरे जो जूनियर्स हैं वो हमें कहते हैं कि हमें पीपीई नहीं मिल रहा कुछ कुछ यानी कह लें कि हमारे जो इस तरह के सब हमें कुछ ऐसे मुखायर हजरात हैं जो कि हमारे अरेंज कर देते हैं लेकिन कोई सिस्टम नहीं है गवर्नमेंट लेवल पे कोई हमें सिस्टम ऐसे नहीं नजर आ रहा कि जो कि हमारे जो स्टाफ जो कि ऑन ग्राउंड है उनको ये दिया जाए तो मैडम से मैं जरा एक सजेशन लूँगा या अगर वो गाइड कर दें इस बारे में मुझे कि क्या करना चाहिए हमें जी प्रोफेसर शमशाह प्लीज गो हेड जी जी डॉक्टर साहब बात यह है कि आपके जो सबसे जब रेलेवेंट जो हैं और जो मोस्ट एप्रोप्रिएट आपके उधर आप अपने एमएस साहब से बात करें एमएस साहब डीजी हेल्थ सारों को जो यहाँ पे सेंट्रल एडवाइजरी ऐसी है जिसको हम कह रहे हैं और या अगर आपको इस तरह का कोई बहुत ही इश्यू आ रहा है तो प्रोफेसर असद असलम साहब इज़ द चीफ कोऑर्डिनेटर और तीसरी बात जो हमने नोट की है यानी इवन इन माय हॉस्पिटल कोविड वार्ड में हमारी नर्सेस without PP बैठी हुई थी तो मैंने उन्हें कहा भी तुम लोगों को जब हमने दिए हैं why you are not wearing तो आपके हमारे healthcare workers में ये भी है कि एक बार PP पहन ली फिर उसको उतारेंगे कैसे तो they have apprehension तो फिर हमने उनको कहा कि देखो यार तुम्हारी जान ज़्यादा ज़रूरी है तुम इसको पहनो even they 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 were reluctant to wear mask के लिए अब सारा दिन हम कैसे पहने तो एक तो ये कि बहुत ज़्यादा doctor आपको stress करने की ज़रूरत है Number two, जैसे हमने log book बनाई भी judicious use of all those protective measures. इसलिए कि हमारे पास उस तरह नहीं है कि हम कहें जी बहुत ज़्यादा है हमें पूरा दिन का issue करते हैं और फिर हम अपने log में से उसको निकाल के और next time हम उसको replace कर लेते हैं. Thirdly ये कि अगर आपका hospital वाले ये कहते हैं कि जी हमें वहाँ से नहीं आ रहा यहाँ से नहीं आ रहा तो जो local vendors बना रहे हैं आप उनको कहें कि जी कि आप ल अब आपके लोकल हॉस्पिटल ने खुद परचेस करना है, खुद ही डिस्ट्रीब्यूट करना है। तो मेरा ख्याल ये है कि अपने रेलेवेंट हॉस्पिटल और जैसे मैंने आपको कहा है कि आपका जो डीएचओ या डीजी हेल्थ है, उससे कोऑर्डिनेट करें, इंशाल्लाह जरूर मिलेंगे। जी, ओके, सो प्रोफेसर शिमसा, आपका कोई और था कमेंट? Now we are going to in the close. Yes, this comment was that we have done another thing to improvise and Dr. Kabani also talked to me about it. We have to give every patient, the obstetric patient and the caregiver, we have to give a shield locally. We have to give a Macintosh or plastic, we have to give a shield locally. We have to give a shield locally. We have to give a mask to the patient. We have to give a mask to the patient. We have to give a mask to the patient. Especially in labor is a very difficult task. तो अब हमने ये करना शुरू कर दिया कि हमने दो ड्रिप सेट्स या दो इस तरह से स्टैंड बना लिए उसके दरमियान में हम एक प्लास्टिक शीट लगा देते हैं बस ये मैंने ऐड करना था चलें थैंक यू सो नाउ आई थिंक आई वुड लेट्स गेट अ क्लोजिंग स्टेटमेंट्स फ्रॉम आर पैनलिस्ट डॉक्टर मरियम मोथन योर न Dr. Morton, go ahead. Assalamualaikum. I was just trying to answer the question about patients going for surgery. Like in any other hospital, Amari Hospital, maybe we don't do 
surgery, which are uh, elective. And patients that need to go for surgery, they do get the screening questionnaire and uh, make sure that the screening questionnaire is negative and they get a face mask. They don't get any kind of swab testing unless they have lymphopenia. That's when they get tested for um, COVID. Otherwise, they don't. Okay, great. Um, all right. Uh, so we are, uh, again, uh, getting closing um, statements from our panelists. Uh, Kaleem, you go ahead and any final thoughts? Nahi, I think uh, this was a good discussion. I think Pakistan ki jo realities hain, wo hame zyada saamne aa rahi hain. Aur aaj ki discussion mera se sabse zyada helpful is hawale se rahi hai ke wahan par uh, na sirf logon ki education ke hawale se hame jo jo hai tahfuzat the, ab ham ye bhi dekh rahe hain ke hamare healthcare worker jo hain, uh, wo bhi jo hai wo in cheezon ko itni zyada sanjeedgi se nahi le rahe hain. میرا ذاتی خیال یہ ہے کہ مختلف انسٹیٹیوشنس کے اندر یقیناً وہاں پر خاصی ڈفرینٹ لیول کے انسٹیٹیوشنس ہیں کچھ بہت ہی اپ ٹو دا اسٹینڈرڈ کام کرتے ہیں کچھ جگہوں پہ جو ہے اس قسم کی چیزیں نہیں ہیں تو میرے ذاتی مشورہ یہ ہوا کہ ایک ہرڈل بنائے ایک روز جو سینئر لوگ ہیں وہ اپنے اپنے وارڈ کے اندر اپنے سارے اسٹاف چاہے وہ خاک روب ہو چاہے وہ اسسٹنٹ ہو چاہے وہ نرسز ہوں چاہے جونیئر اسٹاف ان کے ساتھ مل کر دو تین دن کے بعد ایک چھوٹا سا ایک بریف پانچ منٹ کا دس منٹ کا ان کو ایک اویئرنیس بتائیں کہ اس کی کیا اویئرنیس ہے اگر ہسپتال کا عملہ خود کام اس طریقے کی پریکاشن نہیں لے گا تو مہنگی پی پی خریدنا اور اس کے بارے میں بات کرنے کے علاوہ اس کا کچھ فائدہ ہوگا نہیں اور اب تک ہسپتال کا عملہ جو ہے وہ چیزوں کو صحیح طریقے سے امپلیمنٹ نہیں کرے گا مریض اور مریض کے لحائقین جو ہے یقیناً اس کو فالو نہیں کریں گے اور جنرل جنرل پبلک جو ہے وہ امن ناز وہ ظاہر ہے ہمارے ہیلتھ کیئر ورکرز آر رول ماڈل فار دیم بٹ لیکن وہ جو نشتر سے بات آئی کہ مے بی ان کو تھوڑا وہ پرابلم بھی ہو رہا ہے لیکن نو دیر مسٹ بی ویز اور اب اگر پاکستان میں بن رہے ہیں تو میرا خیال ہے کہ اگر آپ اور دوسرے لوگ جو ہیں اپنا کے اگر وہ نشتر کے کسی جو سینئر لوگ ہیں ان سے ڈائریکٹلی کانٹیکٹ کر کے پوچھیں کہ کیا مسئلہ ہے جی بالکل بالکل چلیں ٹھیک ہے کلیم دین محمد علی قریشی یعنی فائنل تھاٹ آپ کی اگر کوئی کچھ کہنا چاہیں آخری ہیلو جی جی محمد علی قریش انڈیڈ ویری بینیفیشیل ٹاک ٹو ڈے آئی تھنک یہ چیز ہے کہ اسٹل ایون پیشنٹس تو اپنی تو اپنی جگہ پر عام پبلک تو اپنی جگہ پر لیکن اسٹل وی ہیلتھ کیئر ورکرس آر آن دا رسک سو دیر از نیڈ آف سیریسنیس اور دیٹ یہ جو ابھی ڈاکٹر صاحب نے کہا کہ دیر مسٹ بی اے ڈیلی آر آفٹر ٹو آر تھری ڈیز آر ویکلی ریئل سر فار دیٹ ٹو ری چیک اینڈ دوبارہ سے وہی چیزیں ہمیں کرنی چاہیے اور اپنے پیرامیڈک اسٹاف کو سیپرس کو اویئرنیس دینی چاہیے تو اٹس ویری نیسیسری آئی تھنک اور اس طرف توجہ بہت کم ہے اور پی پی ایز کی ڈسٹریبیوشن کے حوالے سے بھی تھوڑے ڈفیکلٹیز ہیں ہمارے یہاں یہاں حیدرآباد میں بہت کچھ کرنے کے کہنے کے بعد کچھ تھوڑی سی امپرومنٹ ہوئی ہے لیکن اسٹل شوڈ بی امپروڈ مور آئی تھنک ٹھیک ہے تھینک یو باقی رمضان کے حوالے سے شیڈول آپ نے کوشچن کہا کہ ابھی ہاں وہ ابھی ڈسائڈ ہو رہا ہے روز پول لے رہے ہیں ہم تو پھر دیکھتے ہیں جو میجورٹی کہے گی اسی کے بارے میں ہم ظاہر ہے کہ روز تو مشکل ہوگا تو ابھی تک میجورٹی تو یہ کہہ رہی ہے کہ سیٹرڈے سنڈے کریں لیکن ٹائم ڈسائڈ کرنا ہے ابھی ہمیں کہ وہ سیٹرڈے سنڈے بھی جو ہے وہ کس وقت کیا جائے ہاں یہ بالکل ٹائم ڈفرینس کی وجہ سے تھوڑا سا اس کو چیک کرنا پڑے گا افطاری کے ٹائمنگ سے چلیں وہ دیکھتے ہیں تھینک یو ڈاکٹر قریشی 
next I will uh, go to, I think um, we're done. One question came late from Azar al Hussein that anybody wants to talk about uh, the drug remdesivir and uh, whether it is, um, you know, the experience. Uh, uh, anyone, uh, Kaleem or any other panelist or uh, our speaker? Um, I, I, I can talk about remdesivir. So remdesivir is a, um, um, they actually uh, developed for Ebola um, and it's supposed to be a inhibitor of the RNA polymerase to another the enzyme that uh, is involved in replicating the virus. Um, so it's got, the data is sort of, uh, there was a recent paper that was published looking at the uh, results from compassionate use um, of the uh, of remdesivir, Tostme, there was, um, you know, again, compassionate use, Kamatabola, there's no comparison group. So, whatever they report, there's no like group to compare it to. So, we still don't know. However, in this paper, they did show K1, and uh, again, it was used in patients who were uh, very sick, and more, more, most of them were intubated. And so, among patients who were intubated, um, only 13% of them. Uh, ended up actually dying, whereas um, for most of the studies, uh, we've seen that mortality in patients um, who are intubated is around 50%. So if you just look at that, then maybe remdesivir is helpful, um, but we can't really say because you can be, uh, uh, you know, randomized controlled trials, which actually give you data, are still ongoing. Um, and um, I will say in my personal personal experience, uh, we have tried this on, um, you know, a uh, in our adult between our adult hospitals and us, we have tried this on a number of patients with good results, but it's you know it, it's still hard to say okay, whether they were going to get better on their own or it was a it was a drug. But yeah, okay, at least at this at, at for now we do know okay, remdesivir does not have a lot of side effects. Um, you know, it's a it's pretty well tolerated, so I think that is um, uh, good news going forward. Um, but uh, studies are ongoing to see whether or not um, how effective it is. Okay, great. Yeah, Chai, yeah, I think I totally agree. Uh, uh, this is Kaleem. Um, the problem is that the abhi jo hai yaha US ke andar jo hai there are uh, randomized controlled trials or in New York ke andar jo hai Mount Sinai ke andar I know there is. Uh, other places, uh, other part of the world. Uh, there are multiple issues. Number one, ke, at what stage it should be given? Uh, number two, the data, your China's ke data, tha, it was a very kind of mixed data. There, those patients were on everything. They throw the kitchen sink. Kis, kisi patient ko jo hai, wo 10th day pe mila tha, kisi patient ko 20th day pe mila the. Majority patient with the latest stage when after the cytokine storm. Although there was it's a benefit seen, like in uske baare mein koi hatmi fasla karna is waqt mumkin nahi. Like in there are everybody who is using it right now in the trial form or otherwise, uh, they are very optimistic. So that's the best we can say. Okay, great. All right, uh, we have come to the end of uh, this um, wonderful session. Uh, we are very thankful to Mehri Narshad for a great presentation, um, bringing a different angle uh, to all these discussions that we are having. Um, and uh, thank you for attendees, panelists. Uh, please keep coming. Uh, we'll, uh, uh, we are doing this daily only up till, uh, I think it will be 24th uh, um, of this month for another, uh, you know, whatever, seven, eight days. Uh, and then in Ramadan, it will be only on weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So um, until tomorrow, uh, please take care of yourself. Stay safe. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.